Hello friends, welcome to Word of God Fridays. Today we're continuing on in the book of Romans. We'll be reading in chapter 3 and it starts with something that sort of makes you go, oh well maybe we should look back. So um, chapters 1 and 2 there was a bit of a preamble from Paul. You get where he's talking about um, just you know the greetings and regards and his longing to see the Roman people that um, had become Christians there. Uh, he also talked about God's wrath against our sin and um, God's righteous judgment against it because of his holiness and our sinfulness. And now at the end, it talked a bit about the Jews and the law. So I'm just going to read the last, I guess, two verses so that we have some understanding of where he's beginning in chapter three. And we're just reading chapter three today. So here we go. Romans chapter three, word of God Fridays in the NIV. A person is not a Jew who is one only outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. What advantage then is there in being a Jew, or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, the Jews have been entrusted with the very words of God. What if some were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullifies God's faithfulness? Well, not at all. Let God be true and every human being a liar. As it is written, actually, I read that wrong. And every human being a liar. Maybe it is human being. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. But if our righteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using human argument. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as some slanderously claim that we say, let us do evil, that good may result. Their condemnation is just. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? No, not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, we know that whatever the law says, it says it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood, to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time. So as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded because, what of, because of what law? The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? 
yes, of Gentiles too, since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. Um, this is a really good argument that Paul makes here. I wanted to pull out, um, he says, as it is written, um, and he's referring to um, Old Testament. So in verse 3, uh, right at the beginning where I was there, uh, that, that one is uh, from Psalm 51, verse 4, if you want to go and reference those. And then going down in verse 10, he quotes from, let me just, oh, I'm sorry. This is going to take me a bit. Uh, that one is Psalm 62, 12 and Proverbs 24, 12. And then we've also got Isaiah 52, verse 5 um, and Ezekiel 36, 20 and 22. So yeah, there's, there's a bunch in here that comes from the Old Testament, Old Prophets, and the Law, okay? So a lot of times when he's referring to law, that's what he's talking about. Um, and, and the interesting thing is, is Paul was a Jew. Uh, he was a leader uh, of the highest kind. I could go to Philippians and read off his little list of, of the things he could have boasted about, but it all does come down to faith uh, because there's one God for Jews and Gentiles, and Gentiles are everybody that aren't Jews. Um, but he was pointing out here also, I love where he says this, that, um, it's the circumcision of the heart, which is why I went back into chapter two so that you understood what he was trying to explain. And I also think it's really important to note that no one is righteous. No, not one that comes from the old Testament. And what I like the best about looking at this is really the, the sin that's listed here that, that classifies us all as unrighteous and not able to bridge the gap between a holy God and sinful mankind is that we lie. I mean, it's repeated over and over again that we are just liars. Our throats are, throats are open graves, our tongues practice deceit, there's cursing and bitterness and poisonous vipers on our lips. It's all about our mouth. And I can count myself in that category 100%. And so, you know, you might want to say, I, well, I haven't done these things. I've kept this or that law, but I guarantee you, you're a liar. Nobody had to teach us that either. Anyway, word of God Fridays. We need to be thankful for Paul laying this out so clearly for us. Uh, word of God Fridays, Romans chapter three in the NIV. Be blessed today.